Are you new to sales or do you want to take your sales career to another level? Don't know where to start? That's this week on Think Tank Tuesday. Hi, I'm Paul Potratz and welcome to this week's Think Tank Tuesday. So the question is, as far as are you new to sales and don't know where to start, or you've been in sales for a while and don't know really what can I do to take it to another level? But let me clarify, if you're a business owner, you're in sales. Just like if you're a salesperson, you're making commission, that's your job every day. We're all in sales. But when I started out in sales, I was really, I mean, I had the passion, I had the drive, I had the excitement, I had everything it took to be as far as a great salesperson. What I didn't have was leadership. I didn't know where to start. It was kind of like, boom, there went the squirrel. Because I was constantly saying, where do I start? What do I do? I, I could do this, and then I'd start going down that path. Or I could do this and go down this path. And I would do that all day long. And then at the end of the day, I had nothing to show for it. Is that the way you feel? Well, yeah, okay, we can say as far as leadership, but there's so many opportunities. And this week, I'm gonna give you as far as a step process of things that you can do in your sales career. Because I had that wake up moment many years ago. I had this brand new manager that came in, and his name was Jim Christensen. And I mean, the guy was like a drill sergeant. In fact, I think from a past life, he probably was in the Marines or something like that. But I mean, he just came in and he commanded respect. The other guys that were there, the sales managers and everything, I didn't really respect him, to be honest. And I'm just the type of personality, it's got to respect somebody before I'll actually follow their lead. Well, Jim came in, and let me tell you, I mean, the guy was aggressive. He was hardcore. But he made one thing crystal clear to me that motivated me like nobody else has ever done in my career. And that's, you've got to be willing to do what others won't do. You can control your own income. I mean, I know this is all common sense and cliche and everything else, but it's like a weight loss program. I mean, we've all met people that's lost weight. And what did they do that others didn't do? They did it. They stuck to it, and they kept on doing it and doing it. And it's the same thing in your sales career. But believe me, I know too well that you can get distracted and say, what I'm doing today, is this really going to affect what I'm, how I'm going to make more money, how I'm going to provide for my family? And I can tell you right now, if you start doing it today, what I'm going to share with you today, if you start doing it today, in 90 days from now, you're definitely going to see an impact. And I mean, and this isn't all about rah, 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 you just do it twice as hard, do it all that, uh, whatever. There's enough people doing that. But what we're really going to talk about as far as steps that you need to do, and you know this, it's common sense, but let's go through it. So are you ready? Step one. What I want you to do is I want you to understand your CRM. Is your company providing a CRM for you? Is it a piece of crap? Well, deal with it because it's better than what you already you don't have. So use that CRM because there is no such thing as a perfect CRM. Believe me, I'm a CRM junkie. I mean, I'm constantly playing on CRMs. I find, you know, enjoyment out of that, I guess. But there's no perfect CRM. So if your company's providing one, use it. And use it like as far as it's your lifeline. I want you to use it all the time. If you can download it on your smartphone, get it on your smartphone. You need to be in that CRM morning, noon, night, and evening. In the evening, you need to be planning out what's going to happen on your CRM for the next day, the following day, and the following day. Make your plan work your plan. So CRM, if the company has it, use it because it will help you. I'm telling you, you can't keep it all up here. I've tried. You can't do it. And if you're using notebooks and all that, it's just not going to work. So I think I pounded CRM enough. If your company doesn't have a CRM, you need to get one. And this is where you can go into that tailspin as far as which CRM, which one, which one do I use? Well, there's a lot of them out there. There really is. And I'm just going to give you three and you just pick one and you go and you use it and you learn it. It's going to be different, but you have to learn it. But after two weeks, it's going to work out fine. So one of them is all contacts. And I mean, it's regardless of whatever industry you're in or whatever. But as far as if you're a salesperson and you're having to foot the bill, 
then all contacts is one that you can use. Another one is big contacts. It does pretty well. It gets kind of, it's kind of robust. Just stick to the basics. And then the third one that's almost free is you can use Salesforce. They have one that you can use that's basically almost free. Again, regardless of the CRM, it's just a tool. So if you don't like any of those three, just pick one and stick with it. Don't have that squirrel mentality that you keep on switching. All right, so your CRM, you need to know how to use it backwards and forwards, and you need to make it like it's a religion. Trust me. The next thing you need to do is you need a business card revamp. I mean, I just got back from Vegas, and I got all these business cards and everything, and I'm really looking at these business cards. And what you want on your business card, step one, a picture of you because that's what's gonna happen. They're gonna connect with you. The next thing, your email address. Believe it or not, there was a lot of business cards I got that didn't even have an email address on it. The next element is your cell phone. Put your cell phone on there so they can contact you when they want to do business with you. You need to be able to, where if I wanted to get in contact with you at 7 o'clock at night, Saturday or Sunday, I need to be able to get in contact with you. So back to the business card. You need to have your email address. You need to have your cell phone number. You need to have your picture on it. And then finally, on your business card, you want to make sure you have something on your business card that's memorable. Like I was talking to a sales guy last night. And he's like, Paul, I'm brand new in the industry. We're going back and forth on email. Well, what do I need to do? Well, he had a unique name. His last name was unique. And I was like, Brandon, play that up, buddy. Play it up. Use it. You want to be memorable because when you're memorable, you're remarkable. So think about that. So become memorable. You've got to pick out whatever your stick is going to be. Get it on your business card so they remember you. And then the next step of your business card is you want to make sure that your business card has a call to action. So as far as, let's say you work at a dealership. Are you offering something like a free car wash? If you guys have car wash capability, you need to offer something to engage them. And it shouldn't be tied to a purchase. All right. Are you ready for step number three? Well, I'm giving you a lot of information here. So before I get onto that, guess what? You guessed it, commercial, and we'll be right back. We've not only seen an increase in the people coming in and the leads and opportunities to sell cars, we've seen record-breaking months, including um, doubling our sales over a year prior to the last few months. They were really looking at for maximizing my business and also giving me a good return on my investment. I would highly recommend them to um, to any dealer that I know that's not in my area. Okay, welcome back. Are you ready for step three? Again, comment on this video. Tell me what you think. I mean, really comment. So I love the comments. It keeps me going, all right? And remember, what I'm telling you, you've got to do it every single day. Don't give up. There's going to be days that you're going to be tired. You're going to have a bad attitude. You're just not going to feel like it. And you've got, you're going to have to dig down, and you're going to have to figure out exactly what is it that that really motivates you and I mean and hopefully you've got somebody that's actually in your life like I had that with Jim and Jim was the guy boy I tell you what there was days I hated that guy but he kept me motivated but anyway so step three are you ready it's old school here time for the old school but there's one thing we can't replace and that's the human voice. So when you come in every single day, I want you to have your 20 touch list. You've got to do it. 20 touches is where you're going to have people that you're going to call. I mean, I want you to scavenge. I'll tell you a secret that I used to do. I used to scavenge everybody's desk. Yeah, I admit it. And I would get business cards because they would have business cards just laying around and they wouldn't even pay attention to them. They never went into a CRM. Ooh, CRM. So scavenge those business cards and get them and then put them into a CRM. Another tip that I used to do, have you ever seen the fishbowl that was in as far as you know, in restaurants where you go in and you drop a business card in. Well, generally what happens as far as those restaurants, well, just pick one and then they throw the rest away. So ask the restaurant, hey, can I have those business cards when you're done? So there you go. Another tip that I want you to do, and I said this was going to be tip three, but I'm just getting excited about things that I used to do back in the day, is when you go into a restaurant and you have that waitress or waiter waiting on you, I tell you what, those are the people that just don't get enough respect. 
and you should give them more respect. A habit that I always used to make, and I still do it today, is on the back of the receipt, if they've given me good service, I write a note on there and I tell them about how awesome, how outstanding they did, what they did, and how they made my day. So it's a real quick note, and I put my name on there. And you know what's really amazing? The next time I go back, that server, that waiter or waitress remembers me. Because you never know who you're going to talk to where it's going to lead you to another opportunity. So keep that in mind. Back to step three. Those business cards, creating that 20 contact list, you've got to do it. And what I, what I want you to do every single day, and you're going to have this in your CRM, is you're going to call. And you're going to call people. And you're not going to go, hey, I was just calling. I wanted to let you know that we got this special. Don't do that, all right? Just call just like they're a person and just say, hey, how you doing? This is Paul. We haven't spoken in a little while. I just wanted to follow up, make sure everything's good. I'm not trying to sell you anything, so don't worry about that. But I just wanted to make sure everything was fine. And just do it. see where the conversation goes. And what's going to happen is they're going to bring their guard down. And you're going to be able to talk to them briefly and just say, hey, just keep in mind, if there's anything at all I can do for you, please let me know I'm here. And then make sure, if you don't have their email address, opportunity to get their email address and stay in contact with them. One last thing. As far as, since I'm really going through the list and I could really use some help, do you know anybody that might be interested in XYZ? I know it's old school, but asking for help will make a huge, huge difference. So do it. 20 contacts per day, and those 20 contacts will give you other contacts that you can build on, plus scavenging those business cards, and think about all of your friends and your family, and just do it every single day. So if you're working a six-day week, that's 120 people that you've contacted just by voice, just on the phone. Big difference. So let's move on to step four. So now we're going to get as far as modern technology. Are you ready? Facebook. Yeah, I mean, seriously, Facebook. It's so simple. So what I want you to do with Facebook is I want you to make this as far as a tool. And you know in Facebook, you need to have one account. Don't set up an account for your business, all right? If you're doing that, go back to the guy that says he doesn't want to use his cell phone number because you're not into it for your family. You're thinking about, oh, I ain't doing this for my employer. Stop that nonsense. You're doing this for you. So you can grow your income, so you can provide for your family. So use the one Facebook account. Granted, you can put list and stuff, so you can put custom list if you only want people to see certain things. But I want you to start adding people on Facebook. And I don't mean as far as people all over the country and the people in the industry. I mean people that can actually affect your income. Yeah, you can add people all over the country. More is better in that sense. But really start to add people that are in your neighborhood, in your backyard, people that can actually help your income grow. It's as simple as that. And then every morning when you show up to work, I want you to do something very simple. I want you to post on Facebook, good morning everyone, I'm at work today. If I can help you in any way, call me. Here's my cell and put it on there. You don't have to put in a sales pitch. Just make it easy and accessible where people can get in contact with you. And think about that. If you have 300 friends, there's a lot of people. That's a lot more than 20 touches. But I don't want you to substitute Facebook for the phone calls. You have to do all four steps if you want to really grow it. So Facebook, grow it, comment. And that's the, the, the key right there. Comment. You don't always have to make the small talk. Go on there and comment when other people are doing something. Be authentic. Don't be like one of those little bomb commenters that you go on and just comment and comment and comment. Be authentic and make comments on other people's posts. It makes it a lot easier. And you're probably asking yourself, how often should I do this? Well, every time you grab your cell phone, you, that you go to go to your cell phone, Make a comment on Facebook. You can't over comment. I mean, you can over post, but you can't over comment. People like being recognized, so recognize them. And one last final thought on Facebook is to make sure you fill in your profile completely. It needs to be filled in. Where do you work? What's your contact information? What books do you like? What movies do you like? What are your hobbies? What are your interests? Fill it in because that's how people are going to connect with you. And your avatar, your picture, it needs to be a picture of you. It's fine if it's a picture of you and your wife or you and your husband or you and your child or whatever, but it needs to really be that I can see you front and clear. And use the images on top. Have some fun with it. That's the basics for Facebook. There's a lot more where that came from, but thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching Think Tank Tuesday. Tune in next week for more digital marketing tips from Potrats.
To download this podcast or watch previous episodes, search for Think Tank Tuesday on iTunes or visit us online at ppadv.com.